Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about this. Yes, welcome back to Paul's PCs. Uh, it's been quite a while, but today we're going to talk about RAM. No, no, not that kind of RAM. No, not that one, no, memory, RAM, memory, computer memory, RAM, random access memory. So, I've been seeing a lot of uh, questions over the last few months as I've been not making videos but trawling random threads and Facebook pages, etc about RAM and RAM speeds. So hopefully today I'm gonna to clear up a couple of those questions. Um, every YouTuber and his dog has already covered this, but what the hell, I'll give it a go as well. We might finally get the message across. Right, so the first question that I've been seeing a hell of a lot of is, I've just bought this 3200 megahertz RAM, and it's showing up as 2133 megahertz. What's going wrong? Well, um, nothing is technically going wrong, uh, to make a long answer of it. So, DDR or dual data rate memory, DDR4, has what is called a base operating frequency that all DDR4 runs at, and that is 2133 megahertz or 2133 uh, every pack of DDR no matter what you are buying this one is a nice Corsair 3200 megahertz kit the moment that you plug that in it will operate at 2133 and it will do that at 1.2 volts uh, so to get it to run at the full speed that is stated on the box 3200 megahertz what they don't tend to tell you, I mean, if you look over this box, it actually doesn't tell you anywhere, um, is that you actually have to overclock it to make it run at that speed. Because 2133 is your standard speed, 3200 megahertz or anything above that is actually an overclock that's been applied to the RAM. Um, the simplest way that we can do this is with an XMP profile or extreme memory profile. Uh, I suppose that should be EMP, but then it sounds like an electromagnetic pulse and that's something that you really don't want near your RAM. So, okay, we'll stick with XMP. Um, yeah, XMP profile. So, uh, to enable one of these, you have to go into your BIOS and find the, usually on the advanced settings or the overclocking settings, and there will be something on there about uh, XMP profile. And depending on what RAM you've got, there may be more than one, but Essentially, you select the top one, in this case, 3200 megahertz, and restart your PC, and that is it. Okay, let's get uh, up close and personal and have a look at how we get uh, to set these XMP profiles. Okay, so we've got to get into the BIOS, so if you're already running your system like I was, restart the PC, and then basically mash the hell out of the delete button until you get into the BIOS. That's true for 99% of boards these days. Maybe F2 or Escape on your board, but most of them just keep mashing delete. Um, so once you're in the BIOS, essentially what you're gonna wanna be looking for is uh, going to be if an overclocking menu, so I've got OC Tweaker on here, or an advanced menu. Um, Depending on what board you've got, these are obviously going to be in slightly different places. Uh, I'm using an ASRock X570 Steel Legend. Uh, so for my board, we're going to go to the OC Tweaker. In fact, if we have a quick look across, we should be able to see just here, as a standard, my RAM is running at DDR4 2133 8GB. Right, so, we're gonna have a look at loading the XMP setting. Yours may say load XMP profile, but something like that is what you're looking for. Um, the slightly different variation I've got here that says load DRAM profile is something that appeared on my latest BIOS update and it is for AMD specific memory, uh, which I do not have. But if you have got it, you may wanna try this. 
Um, but, I mean, the load XMP setting should work anyway. So, we go to load XMP setting. Select XMP profile 1. Um, do have a look on yours. I know that there are some RAM kits that will have maybe two profiles. So, uh, you might have like a 2666 and the 3200. Or something similar to that. Whichever one that you're looking for, you probably want to be setting the high setting. So, select the profile that you want, hit enter. And we can see here that the DRAM voltage, which was default at 1.2 volts, is now going to be upped to 1.35. Uh, that's to stabilize the overclock to the RAM. And we're going to be running at DDR4 3200 instead of the base speed of 2133. Uh, so hit F10 to save your changes and restart. Okay, so we're back in Windows and I've just uh, opened up Task Manager and put it on the memory page. So we can now see, that hopefully you can make this out, we are running at 3200 megahertz. Uh, depending on your system, you may actually see a different number here. What you may see is 1600 megahertz. Um, don't worry, that is still correct. Um, basically, DDR stands for dual data rate, as I've mentioned. So, if you say see 1600 megahertz here, you are running at 3200 megahertz RAM. Um, so, yeah, it could be 1800 megahertz or 2000 megahertz, depending on the RAM speed that you've got. But essentially, whatever you've got will be doubled, unless, of course, like me, you see the high number. It does vary system to system, probably more dependent on your motherboard or even maybe even the RAM kit that you've got as to whether this number will show up as half of itself or the full speed of itself. A little bit confusing, but just remember if you've applied your XMP profile and it says an unusually low number, then it's dual data rate, it will be operating at twice that speed. Now I'll go into depth a little bit more about the other way of setting your RAM speed uh, which is by doing it manually at a different time in a different video. But for today we'll move on to the next RAM related question. The next uh, question or I guess uh, statement that has been thrown around a lot is that you need a specific memory speed for Ryzen processors. In fact the usual statement is you need to have 3600 megahertz for Ryzen. Now, there may be a little bit of confusion with this. Um, I think some people think that they have to have that speed. Um, that That's not the case. As you can see, I mean, I'm running Ryzen and I have 3200 megahertz RAM. So first of all, any RAM speed is going to work with your Ryzen processor. Uh, however, there is an optimal speed for a Ryzen processor, which is the 3600 MHz RAM. Now, the reason for this is based on how the latest generation of the Ryzen CPUs actually works. It's uh, to do with its architecture. So, what we have with the Ryzen CPU is what's called a chiplet design. Uh, as opposed to Intel, which is using what we call a monolithic design. So what this means is that uh, where on Intel, the CPU cores and uh, the I.O. that basically communicate from the cores to the motherboard, with Intel that is all on one chip, uh, that's a monolithic design. With Ryzen, uh, they've taken a different direction and they've kind of broken these bits down uh, largely because it helps to uh, increase the yield that they get when making the processors. Um, if you've got a smaller chiplet you get a lot more chance of getting working ones when you print a processor wafer. Um, that and there are other power efficiency advantages that they can have. But essentially we have this same process and it is broken down. So we have on my 3950X, I have got two processor chiplets uh, that both have eight cores and 16 threads and one IO chiplet, uh, which basically allows everything to communicate. And the way that these are connected is through something called Infinity Fabric. And the Infinity Fabric, just like your memory or 
your CPU has an operating frequency um, and it has a range in which it works. Uh, 1800 megahertz is the supposedly the optimal speed for the Infinity Fabric to run. Um, and as it has to be linked for best results to your memory clock speed, uh, it's usually at a ratio of two to one. So if it's 1800 megahertz is optimal for the Infinity Fabric, then to link it for the best optimization, you have double that, which is 3600 megahertz for your memory. And that is where that statement uh, that everyone's saying is coming from. So it is just a case of linking the clocks. Now, you can unlink the clocks or you can run them at a slower speed. Uh, so with my 3200 megahertz kit, I'm running at a 1600 megahertz Infinity Fabric clock. Now, does that make much of a difference? Not really. Um, there are, if you seek it out, if you go through specific benchmarks and really look for the difference between 3600 megahertz and 3200 megahertz or different speed RAM on a Ryzen processor, then you'll find it. Um, but as a, as a general end user, if you're doing a hell of a lot of gaming or anything like that, you're not really going to notice much difference. There's, there's been plenty of tests done that show that there's no major advantage from 3000 megahertz up to 3600 megahertz RAM for gaming. I think Jay's Two Cents has done a video, I'll, I'll link it in the description about this. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no major advantage. So if people are telling you you have to get this RAM speed, you don't have to listen to them. Get what you can afford. If you like your the Vengeance Pro 3200 megahertz and it's in your budget, it's not going to be harmful to your system to have that in there. It, it may be slightly less than optimal, but in realistic terms, you're never going to notice that. And once again, you could always overclock your RAM to run at any speed that you like, but I will revisit that at another time. All right, well, if you've stuck with me this far, thanks for watching and giving me the opportunity to get used to talking to the camera again, uh, as I've had a fair bit of time off from doing this. I have got plenty of more content lined up for you. In fact, I never stopped having content for you. I just didn't have the time to be able to do it. Um, I'm not gonna go into why, but I didn't. Now I have. So there should be videos starting to come again soon. And I'll re-pick up on some of the segments that I started off back in January and didn't actually get to continue with. Uh, so we should be having tech catch up, uh, ACOC, I say I can overclocking, and a few quick tips videos and whatever else I've got going. I've still got the uh, Mac Hackintosh case to work on at some point and I've actually still got to finish off my sleeper build videos. So all being well, I shall see you very soon for another video and yeah. Really got to work on the closings for these videos. Catch you later.